Hey everybody, my name is Ryan Swanson. Welcome to this episode of Fun Analysis. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the official Week Zero event uh, held in New Hampshire this past weekend, and uh, we'll be looking at the finals matches. So uh, this will be an awesome episode, digging into the first kind of steps of the new game. We'll dig into strategy, we'll dig into kind of lessons learned. Uh, and then we'll also cover a second week zero event from a local uh, competition near me. That one is going to be uh, from the Wilmer week zero event in which we've got some pretty high performing matches uh, that we'll talk through. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. So to start things off, uh, I'm just going to hit play here and we're going to watch through. This is finals match number three. And in this match, we've got the seven seed versus the two seed. We've got 1153 and 1768 on the seventh seed as your offensive robots. And you'll see it, uh, team 58 is going to be their defender. We'll pause coming right out of autonomous here. And I'm going to get my pointer. You're going to notice uh, right here and right here, both alliances have scored a single cone in auto. And then additionally, they've got one on the ground for blue, I uh, believe one on the ground for red as well. So they're essentially tied coming out of auto. One thing this year is that the scoring is manually input. And so there's going to be uh, a delay potentially getting those scores updated. So when you're looking at it out of the gate, uh, it might be a little bit confusing. The other thing to note here is that there was a, a difference in the balances. So right out of autonomous, you see red, 1073, they got on, they balanced, they got 12 points. And blue, they're not fully supported by the charging station. Uh, so right now, red is going to be coming out of autonomous with a 12-point lead. So let's follow along. On the red number two seed, we've got 4909 and 1073 both running offensive cycles. And then we've got uh, 1729 playing defense kind of in the middle of the field. You can, you can see that action going on uh, right in the middle of the field, right around here. Um, well, I'm learning how to use this tool. But the action right now defensively, uh, I noticed between watching these finals matches, 58 and 17-29 uh, did a lot of defense and counter defense. You can see they're doing it right in the middle of the field right now. Uh, they're not engaged with the offensive robots primarily because there are so many uh, so large of safe zones on the field. So when they're just hanging out in the middle of the field, as you see, there's nothing for them to do right now. They're just hanging out, waiting for uh, the offensive robots to cycle through. Offensively, you can see teams are flying up and down the field. Uh, there's not a ton of interaction between the two sets of offensive robots. The primary interactions between the defenders and the offensive robots. Coming into 80 seconds left in the match, we've got Red uh, building upon their lead coming out of the autonomous period. And you can just see everyone kind of consistently cycling. A lot of big hits here. Um, not, not a ton of uh, tippy robots on the field. That's kind of unique. I think this year there's going to be a lot of tippy robots, a lot of robots that are uh, they're going to hit, make these big collisions, and they're not going to recover from them. Let's take a pause right here and assess the uh, the current status of the match. So right now you've got the red uh, number two alliance. You can see they're currently out cycling blue. Blue has a couple of links yet to finish here, so they have a, a point differential where, or I guess, points that they can make up. Red, meanwhile, they've got one completed link, and you're looking right here. Um, They've got two, two pieces left uh, right around this arrow. And 
so yeah, I mean, they, in terms of cycling, they're not too far off. It's really that auto differentiator right now, the 12 points that they, they were dealing with. Notice teams are trying to cycle through the gaps. You don't see a lot of them uh, cycling over the charging station. And I think that'll be a pretty common theme until teams get very comfortable. Match flow is kind of an interesting thing here as well. Uh, 1073 just went over the charging station in a cycle. But match flow is kind of interesting. So we're going to take a pause here, reassess the status of the match. 1073 for red. They went up around 28 seconds. And then you've got uh, their alliance partner coming up right around 21 seconds. Notice that both of them are on the very edge of the charging station, leaving room for their third partner to, to, uh, to join them. So we'll keep going. And they've got their balance. They've got a triple balance. They have a four-point lead, uh, which is a bit ambiguous because we don't know what points are already being counted from the charging station. But they've got 16 seconds left, and they're already done. Meanwhile, over on blue, we've got teams still cycling, and you've got two teams similarly on the edge of the charging station, uh, room in the middle for their third alliance member to drive up. Let's keep watching. 14 seconds is when they start to go up. And they're struggling. They're trying to get aligned. They know they need the triple balance to win. And there you go. There, there's your death blow. So essentially at this point, no matter what happens, blue is lost. They've got too large of a differential on the charging station to be able to make it up and uh, to come back. So from here, what I'd like to do is take a look at this right here. So this is the outcome for each of the four finals matches at the official week zero. Let's just take a look at the data and see what that tells us about the outcome. So it's a unique situation in which we actually had a tie in finals two, which enabled four matches to be played in the finals. So if you look at the, uh, the red highlighted, that is where the red alliance, the two seed, won that category. So in final one game piece points, they outscored the blue alliance 35 to 33. And similarly for the blue highlighted ones over here, that's where the blue alliance outscored the red alliance in that category. So in anything not highlighted, they either lost or tied that element. So taking a look here at finals one, blue alliance won a number of categories. They actually tied in link points, tied in end game, and that 42 number is important. That's the most end game and uh, charge station points. That also is including the autonomous uh, balance during the uh, for, for the charging station. That 42 points is key because uh, both alliances hit it, and uh, I'll get to why later. But essentially, you see blue alliance. They take the first match. They actually would have won had they had no penalties at all. Um, but they pull out number one uh, just barely by game piece points and by penalties. Finals two, we actually have kind of a weird situation. We've got a small differential in end game points. Blue actually wins that category by eight. Game piece points is virtually tied, just a one point difference. And really, this one came down to penalties. So red took the, the lead on penalties, one point lead on game pieces. Eight point differential on the uh, the charging station, and there you have a tied match. So that's kind of an interesting situation. Uh, typically, as we'll see in finals three and four, if you win the charging station, if you get the most points on charging station, you win the match. And you see that reflected here, uh, where red makes makes a great comeback. They tie. They win final three, win final four to pull out the first victory of this new year. And you see how they did it. Charging station points, they actually lost on game piece points by a ton, right? 24 to 49. They got killed in terms of cycling. Uh, Blue Alliance actually put up three links, uh, which is very impressive for early in this year. Uh, but however, the Blue Alliance... Like we saw in finals three, they had a failure at the charging station during the end game. And that took them from 20 points. If the third robot had just stayed out of the way down to 14 points, 
and uh, enough to lose the match. If the robot would have just stayed out of the way and parked for two points, they actually would have had another tie in this match. Similarly, Finals 4, uh, very similar outcome for the Blue Alliance. Charging Station, Mishap, they end up with only 10 points, and they lose by 10. So there you have it. That is uh, kind of my takeaway from that match or those sequence of matches. You must win the Charging Station if you're going to plan to win the match. Next, I'd like to take a look at uh, another set of matches, and this one was a local event to me. It was the Wilmer Week Zero event in Minnesota, and we actually had some scouting data from that event. So uh, 6045 is actually my team. I'm the head coach, uh, so we have scouting data from us. Team 5348 and Team 5638 both played very, very well throughout this event, and you see here the total number of uh, game objects scored. This includes both autonomous and teleoperated. So you see teams were scoring between five and nine cycles at this event individually. And uh, 5638, right above five cycles on average. So with that said, uh, let's take a look at a match in which two of these ro or all, actually all three of these robots are cycling together. So here we have 6045 right here, 5348, and then down at the end, we've got uh, 5638. Now, the video isn't the greatest. You're able to see what's going on, but let's take a look at the match. We actually only have two game objects scored in the autonomous period, and that'll be relevant later uh, as we dig in. So basically, out of autonomous, pretty minimal action. Autonomous ending right now. Uh, teams begin cycling. So in this match, the opponents, uh, there's not a ton of defense being played, but there is a lot of interaction in the middle of the field. And that interaction makes it uh, highly variable how many game objects you're going to be able to score coming out of the middle of the field to shorten your cycles. Right now, uh, 5348 and 5638 uh, and 6045 are all cycling to the middle of the field and going short cycles. Now, for this match, there wasn't a ton of coordination, as you'll see right here. Uh, 5348 knocking over a cone, 6045 unable to pick up that cone, had to resort to the charging station. Now, let's take a pause. There's no game objects left on the field, and we've got 5348 going to the, uh, the loading area in order to pick up their next game object. 5638 and 6045 are already there. And you're going to see, sorry, 5348 is actually stealing a game element from the opponent inside their frame perimeter. Now, this is kind of cool. All three of them are now scoring at the same time. Now, this is great. You've got three game elements scored within five seconds of each other. However, it's also a little inefficient because you've got to actually wait for the other two robots to move before you're able to get out of there. Now is when the trouble starts. You've got three robots all trying to score or uh, intake game objects. And this is just wasted time, wasted time. Everyone's kind of just in each other's way. Now, finally, they all get out of there. This is just poor sequencing by this alliance in which they're all kind of cycling in sync with each other. Now, I do think it would be possible for these teams to kind of get out of sync uh, and be a little bit more efficient. But you can see, I mean, there's, there's just so much room in th that area to intake game objects that three robots makes it a real challenge. The benefit to this alliance is that 5348's been able to steal multiple game objects from an, uh, the opponent, which may or may not be you know, a factor in real events, especially if, uh, if your opponent goes to climb early. So let's let this play out. This match ended with 17 game objects scored, by three robots playing triple offense. And you'll see they're also going to be a double balance here right at the end. 17 game objects scored and uh, three robots cycling. You can see it right here. So almost everything filled up except the one cube that got missed on the second row and the top row is completely full. With the double balance, um, assuming auto would have gone a little bit better, this alliance could have peaked at about 130 points which uh, that, that's getting there 
near the max, right? It's week zero and we're already at 17 cycles. I mean, that's, that's kind of crazy. So from here, let's take a look at similar robots cycling with two offensive robots instead of three. Pulled up right now, we have 5348, 6045, and uh, another team. And in this case, there's only going to be two offensive robots. The third offensive robot, or the third robot, is actually going to uh, die, but they're going to die in a place that they're not in the way of the other two cycling robots. I believe they're going to score their preload, the third robot, and then they're going to score one at the end. But other than that, there's not a ton of contribution to the overall score. And we'll see how how does this two offensive robot alliance compared to the three offensive robot alliance that we just looked at. Now, similarly to the last time, there's interaction in the middle of the field. Uh, this time around, it looks like the offensive robots that we're following were able to get more uh, out of the center before having to go to the human player station. Now, 6045 is intaking a cone from the human player. 5348 is navigating the field and uh, still picking up the pre-staged elements. So there's no interaction between the two. Similarly, check this out. I'm gonna rewind it a bit. Watch how cleanly they both, in sequence, they go through their own entry point. Nobody has to take the time to cycle over the charging station. They're able to get in and get out. Same spot, nice and clean. And now you've got your third robot occupying the left double substation. 6045 going the right double substation, 5348 going from the ground, really from the single substation. And there's not a whole lot of interaction between the two. They're not slowing each other down. They're able to go at their own pace. And the sequencing between entry and exit points was something that these two teams had coordinated going into the match. And aside from you're about to see one quick interaction, suboptimal interaction right here where they're just barely in each other's way that's the only time you'll see them really get uh you know slowing each other down so again 5348 able to steal game objects from the opponent uh the opponent can't allow that to happen in a real match the opponent's got to be very careful to prevent that from happening but what you're going to see here is the number of game objects scored by this alliance with two primary offensive robots rather than three, uh, they actually score 16 game objects. So there's one that I'll show once the timer goes. So you've got one balance now instead of the two, or one, I guess you'd call it docked but not engaged. There's actually a couple of cones on the ground. So there's one here out of view. There's one right here. And then you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I guess the full top row. So you've got 16 game elements scored, much cleaner traffic flow. And, uh, you know, if this, if uh, the third partner is freed up to play defense on the opponent, the, the overall efficiency of that alliance is going to go way, way up. So for me, my takeaway from these two matches is the value of two offense and one defensive robot. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to keep an eye out for more Funalysis videos coming at you down the road. Uh, if you've got any other ideas for cool matches that we should check out in the future, please let us know and we'll take them into consideration and uh, do a video about them. Thanks everybody. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.